Hello and welcome, this is Carlos Bostra from Corvus Belly Studios. Behind the camera making this video for you is Connie, Super Star Wars for Admiral. And this is the summer seminar, okay? This is the huge studio update that Corvus Belly has been preparing, okay? If this was a normal year, we would be at Gen Con arriving with all these contents. We have tons of previews, tons of stuff to communicate and to announce and to make you be amazed, okay? We are right in the last day of the pre-order of Operation Crimson Stone, the Code 1 theme week that we have been showcasing okay, on, on your screen during these days. This is the last day, so if you know you want this, get it now, because it's the last day, and you will get more miniatures with, with this deal, okay? So, during this video, we're going to show you lots of previews of Corvus Belli, of Aristea, Defiance, uh, Tag Ride, ah, yeah, something called Infinity also, yeah, so get ready because there's a huge wave of contents coming at you right now, so are you ready? Let's go! So let's begin with Aristeia, our board game, the superstar multiplayer combat sport from the future, okay, the, the little spin Infinity spin-off. When the Infinity Soldiers turn on TV, they watch Aristeia, that's what happens in the future, okay. So, they remember that the last expansion was Aristeia Prime Time, the, the multiplayer expansion that allows up to three or four players to play simultaneously Aristeia, okay. And in a previous video this year, we said true, three true statements about Aristeia. There are going, there are going to be more metal miniatures for uh, Aristeia already existing characters, what we call skins, okay. There are going to be more AGL uh, tournament packs and tournaments, official tournaments by Corvus Belli of this game, but we are not releasing yet more expansions or new characters, additional characters for Aristeia, okay? That is the schedule, the plan from Corvus Belli by now, okay? During this video, what you will see is at least three new metal figures for Aristeia characters. So stay tuned because they are going to pop up during the video. So, shall we continue? Are you ready? Let's go! So let's talk now about Defiance, the successful Kickstarter campaign made by Corvus Belli with a Dungeon Crawler Infinity theme game, okay, back in the day, because it was right before the pandemic exploded, really, okay, and we are delivering right now, okay, I have here something to show you. Remember that we are expecting essentially for Wave 2, okay, that is going to bring the expansions, okay, Revenant and Outcast, the O12 theme expansion and the Mercenaries theme expansion, okay, and those are being shipped in cargo boats from, from China. So let me show you here a really interesting graphic, okay. So here, as you can see, and please take this graphic literally, it's right like this, okay, this is f super realistic, okay. So you can see three boats are coming from China, from certain location, okay, and one is going to Australia, has, probably has already arrived by now, okay. And that is coming with Wave 2, and, and probably during these days, the shipments for Australian players who purchase uh, uh, Defiance are going to be arriving at your homes in the desert over there, okay? Apart from that, there's another boat, look at this line, it goes over Brazil for some reason, and then arrives, it's supposed to arrive at Florida, as I know, but here in the graphic it arrives almost in Canada, literally like that, okay, flying over Brazil. That is the American boat that is coming with Wave 2 and fusion it with Wave 1 in order to deliver to the Americans all the backers of this uh, crowdfunding campaign. So expect by the end of July to uh, begin to receive your package, okay? For those of you who decide to have just one shipment with Wave 1 and Wave 2 or people just waiting for Wave 2, okay? And finally, the last one to arrive. Uh, to Spain is the last one because, as you can see, the boat is going over Africa twice, as you can see, jumping uh, over, over Africa. Will arrive later, okay, at Spain, and that is uh, from Corvus Belli HQ, where we are going to ship everybody else, okay, their wave one, wave two, together, whatever, okay, because we will have together the core box, the collector's box, uh, Revenant, Outcast, everything all together. So. During this summer, by the end of July or the end of August, you will receive the final package, okay? For all of you, thank you so much, supporters. We were not expecting the pandemic. We were not expecting the Swiss Canal crisis. We were not expecting many of the issues that make this have such a late delivery, but we expect to satisfy you with the quality of the contents. In fact, some of you are already playing with Wave 1 Defiance. Tell us in the comments what you think, because 
I am having a great time doing it. <laughs> so I can tell you that. Thank you so much. Oh, wait. Talking about Defiance, allow me to talk to you about Luxumbra, the partner company from Corvus Belli that has made something very Defiance related, which is the Stalker spaceship. Okay, ta -ta -ta -ta. take a look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Okay, this lovely 3D render is the actual spaceship and I'm bringing it to you. Here is this big. Look at this. This is the actual dropship from the Defiance. This is the Stalker, the actual spaceship that can land on the board of the Defiance. It's not only just a beautiful piece of terrain that can work for infinity, it has uh, <laughs> doors and everything and even back door here. But if you lift it up like this, let me show you. I have plenty of images for this. Okay. Inside the Defiance, inside the, the dropship, you have the playable part of the dropship. You can also uh, get out the, the landing gear here. And all, it also allows to fit the tile of the board of Defiance inside the spaceship. So you can make three-dimensional the whole thing. Play with your figures with these sliding doors here. You can make it work like that. And it's the ultimate super custom made thing for for super enthusiastic players of defiance okay this is available right now as i'm talking to you in this video okay in the luxumbra store the, the stalker dropship is now available for the following weeks i guess it's just two weeks availability for this super product okay and it works for defiance for infinity for anything else okay is for the ultimate super defiance backer who decides to go all in and make their adventures in the dungeon crawler definitely incredible or your next infinity table have this big piece of terrain with people jumping around or going inside or whatever okay super special like the last super uh, achievement of, of, of backer of this project you have it right here okay the last incredible little effort here put by luxumbra the, the partner company by Corpus Belli. Speaking about Corvus Belli Partners, we have to talk about the original one, the first one, Corvus Belli, a very well-known company, MicroArt Studio from Poland, okay, they made, among many other things, the most successful infinity building piece of terrain ever, the most sold, which was the District 5. Now they are coming with pre-painted terrain, with something spectacular here, the Pressing Sigma, new scenery, which is already quick assembly, pre-painted and very compatible and stackable with each other, okay? So we have here some images for you of the new thing. So if you're one of those players who just want to assemble a good looking table without having to paint the terrain or to assemble in difficulty, this is the product for you, okay? And comes from Microsoft Studio, which is always a sign of quality. They make very good products and they are available everywhere because they are not just an online store. They, they distribute their stuff. So you will find them easily. So check them out, pressing Sigma. So now let's talk about Infinity, and in fact, let's talk about the real deal, okay? Let's talk about Infinity Code 1, because this is the last day of Operation Crimson Stone. Remember, the pre-order offer, this is the last moment you can click on that button and get it now, okay? And talking about also partner companies, we have to talk about the American one, Warsenal, okay? Which is the best providers of MDF terrain, the most beautiful pieces of terrain I've ever seen made with that material, okay, those are made by Warsenal. Talking about this, the relation between Warsenal and Greenstone Stone, they have uh, published now a, a new product which is a set of markers that totally fit the logos of every single unit from Greenstone Stone and also a, a circular template with the logo of Wolfgang Amadeus Wolf, okay, theme. Uh, markers those usually go perfectly with the Operation Crimson Stone box. They made it every year. If we were at Gen Con, they would be selling you <laughs> in in your hands the, the markers next to the Crimson Stone box. Happens every year. And also I have a preview, uh, preview for them. Okay, I have here the C1 Small Warehouse, which is part of the C1 series. Okay. Warsenal is delivering right now a theme terrain to make assemble together an incredible dense Yuchin theme table, okay, of the working class uh, suburbs of Yuchin, okay. They are very detailed, full of hideouts, full of uh, corners where you can place your miniatures, very dense, okay, giving a, a sense of industrial suburb, really, and packed 
with detail. Hey, thank you so much, Warsana, for allowing us to show here some spectacular preview of the new Yuqing Sichuan District table. Have I mentioned that we are right in the last day of Operation Crimson Stone Week, where we have here the beautiful miniatures of Operation Crimson Stone? Yes? Okay. Very related with this is the natural expansion of Operation Crimson Stone, beyond Operation Crimson Stone. Shall we show you the true profiles and the miniatures and the concept design? Shall we? Let's do it! Okay, the first design I want to show you here is the Scots Guard Code 1 dossier. Okay, this is the new design for the Caledonian unit that is going to be featured in Beyond Crimson Stone. And there you have the 3D render is uh, holding the Marsman rifle in his hands. Regular shoulder, Scottish slash Cosmoflot unit, okay, that is going in this box. What else can I show you? Yes, I can show you the real deal, the miniature that you're looking for, which is the Cosmo Soldat. This is the concept design. Now you know that it's going to be featured in Code 1, holding the HMG in his hands. And this is the 3D render. There you go, Cosmo Soldat. I know, I read the comments. I know that many people was really expecting for this guy, okay? And the lieutenant, the natural leader of these guys, okay? Having a Claymore 4 and a Scottish Kilt, okay? William Wallace, new concept design, there you go, okay, William Wallace, the, the obvious um, alpha male leader of, of this army, and there you go, the miniature, a spectacular miniature, okay, jumping ahead, I can feel him some cutting first strike vibes here, okay. So, those are the three figures for Ariadna in Beyond Crimson Stone, now let's check out the nomads, because they are getting new miniatures, 3D and 4 miniatures for nomads remember what happened with the tomcats okay they were lovely miniatures back in the day but they were out of the 3d line of the standard of robust valley now we have the new concept design there you go and the new 3d miniature right there holding holding the gizmo kit in his hand that is the gizmo kit many people was asking about that one okay how about wildcats lovely miniatures back in the day but they were released right before Operation Ice Storm, so they were not in 3D, they were manually and out of scale in a certain way. Now we're going to make them again better, okay? We have here the concept design of the Wildcats right now, and we have here a lovely 3D render of the Wildcats with the Spitfire. Take a look at that. There you go, Nomads for the wing, and finally the biggest one of the box, the Bostock Sputnik Remote, okay? Armor platform and take a look at the three render is that menacing and that big. That is the big one figure from beyond Crimson Stone. Talking about Code 1 and the release schedule of products that are going to arrive specifically for Nomads and Ariadna, I'm so happy because I can show you here the concept design of the new Sun remotes for Nomads. Classic, very, very old and dated miniatures that finally now are arriving with the new concept design. Look at that, okay? Some remotes, new some remotes for you, Nomads, for you, Tunguska players, for you, Corregidor players, for you, Bakuni players, Wars in everything. So don't miss them out, okay? Apart from that, for all your armies and for all your units, we have something else new support pack for Nomads, okay? And I have here the designs. And look at that. We switch places here with the gender, okay? And instead of a female Dactaris, we have a male Dactaris and we have a female clockmaker, okay? So there you go. That is the 3D render of the figures right there with the, the female clockmaker and the male Dactaris, okay? And I know that this is mind-bending for many of you, okay? Totally, wow! <laughs> So why don't we now move from Code 1 to M4? Are you ready? Let's take a look at this preview. What was the last big theme for M4? Well, previously this year there was the Military Orders theme week, if you remember about it, that had an incredible action pack with the Military Orders arriving with the new Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, with the new uh, Knight Commander, okay? There was an incredible battle report made by Gorsus Belli for that week. I, I hope you remember. And be, after that, there was the box of Teutonic Knights, okay, with an Indigo Spec Op also inside. There was the box of Trinitarian Intertaris, okay. And now I can show you that the next things for you, fans of the military orders, is going to be a new Santiago Knight. This one with the Spitfire. Take a look at this 3D render, please. 
and there's also going to arrive the regular release with a different sculpture for the Montesa night, uh, the biker night, okay? Because the previous one in the theme week was exclusive for that theme week, and now we have here the regular release with different loadout and different sculpture. Take a look at the Montesa with the Red Fury in his hands. This is the walking stance, and this is the mounted figure with the Montesa knight with Red Fury, okay? Yeah, for the military orders! And yes, if you remember, there was Father, Padre Inquisidor, Father Inquisidor Mendoza in the theme week of the military orders, but that was exclusive from the theme week, so there's going to be also a regular release at some point of Father Officer Mendoza. And this is also interesting for Aristella players who also can enjoy having that special figure of Father Officer, <laughs> Father Officer, Padre Inquisidor Mendoza on the board. So. You, you might say, mm, I already have the Aristella one, I already have the Special Winged Edition one, I already have the, the Thin Week one. This one is not going to be interesting for me. Are you sure? Check this miniature out. Look at that lovely Padre Inquisidor Mendoza figure. Look at that one. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. For you, Infinity players, and for you, Aristella players. One skin. Let's go. Moving on. If you remember, the last exclusive winner pack tournament figure for the last season of ITS was Parvati, Circle League Star, okay, a character also from Aristella, and that was exclusive, okay. Now I'm going to show you here the three render of the regular release of Parvati, Circle League Star. For you, our left players, O12, I guess, also can benefit from this. And, yeah, holding the SNG and the Gizmo Kit in her hands, okay, that is Parvati, and it is the regular release of Parvati. So, another figure that is also playable in Aistella. Two skins, okay. Octavia Grimm's daughter, that was one of the pre-order figures from the arrival of the M4 book, okay, and that was exclusive from the book. We are going to show you the regular release at some point, the single blister of Octavia Grimm's daughter, that we all know that she's a Sassvasti, you know, it's, that's, that, that's her. everybody knows about that, okay. We have Octavia Green's daughter with the contender and the missile launcher in her hands. That is the three render of the figure. Okay. Moving on, talking about Sasbastis. Talking about Sasbastis, you know, uh, we have a new blister of shrouded coming. Okay. And we have right there the shrouded with the boarding shotgun in his hands, on in its hands. Uh, it's, it's alien, not specific. Okay. So, apart from this, moving on, talking about aliens, we have tiger creatures for M4 right now. For the combined army, a box of four tiger creatures, okay? And you have been playing Defiance, you know how deadly these are, especially if they are next to you, okay? So, close combat specialist. And now, for you, you team players listening to this, for you, the ones who got Operation Kalstrom back in the day and got very excited about the Jujak, but just have one miniature of the Jujak, I can tell you, Corvus Belli is now, yeah, arriving, delivering to you a box of Jujax, okay, the Korean Shock Infantry, okay, so this is the concept design, and this is the three render of the actual box, with two male Jujax, one team bot, and one female Jujax, that is not just a female Jujax, it's a new character for you, Ching, okay, allow me to introduce you to a... Uh, Sergeant Sora Kwon, okay, Korean female Jujak for Yu Ching. New character, she's going to have a new true profile, and we will reveal that true profile soon at some point, okay? But, you know, character Jujak links with Jujak goes in the Jujak box. Pretty awesome, okay? So, yeah, Yu Ching getting the cool heavy infantry boxes once again, okay? And finally, for you, Haki Slam players. I know that it has been a rough year, okay, getting Monst Trackers was not what you were expecting so much, okay, but I have something to show you and to tell you, okay, the future is going to be brilliant for Hack Islam because we still have to deliver satisfyingly the unit profiles and the unit designs from Hack Islam that you have seen already when the M4 our book arrived, so in that tag and, and those Hassas in new units. But also for you, I'm showing you now the new concept design for Saladin. Not O12 Saladin, not Defiant Saladin, no, no, the one that matters, Hack Islam Saladin here. Because Chester Ocampo, long time Infinity Illustrator, is now making concept designs, and this beautiful concept design is the, how the new Saladin for Hack Islam is going to look like. 
So this is the most beautiful concept design wise. Mwah! Chef, chef kiss. Absolutely. Why well, I'm so excited about this one because I know that it's for sure going to look beautiful. And you know, Haki Slamper, that vanilla Haki Slam with Saladin and many different combos is a lovely army, very efficient, very useful figure. Okay. So, moving on. One more thing. We have the new ITS Season 13 tournament pack uh, going to, to, to be announced and showcased to you. And also the new Aristella Global League tournament packs. Okay. And they both will share one special figure. Okay. Because I can tell you now that both tournament packs are going to share Fiddler. Okay. Fiddler, the Aristella character, is going to have now a playable figure in both games, in Aristella and Infinity. And this is the incarnation of Fiddler in a certain stage of all the transition of that character through many bodies and many, many identities. Okay. And this is how she looks like at this point. Okay. Female cyborg, okay, with a with a wheel, which is this, uh, a common element with the Aristeia figure, and she looks like this, okay. So big news: the fielder ex Aristeia toy maker is now also a new unit profile playable in Infinity. Shall we take a look at this profile? Shall we? Let's do it. This is Fiddler's Infinity profile. Fiddler Aristeia's ex toy maker, okay. Movement six four. A cube, regular, close combat 18, BS12, PH12, willpower 14, arm 1, BTS3, 1 wound, silhouette 2, reliability of 1. Equipment, gizmo kit, skills, close combat attack plus 1 burst, dodge plus 3, dodge plus 1 inch, engineer, shock immunity, critical hit immunity, climbing plus, no wound incapacitation, and 3 slots with contender plus 1 burst, drop bears and dischargers, 1 jackpot or 2 jackpots. 28, 35, 42, and let's check now the uh, jackpot uh, remote, okay, which is hackable. Uh, it's a peripheral syn synchronized uh, remote with courage, explode, shock immunity, and climbing plus. 6, 4, 16, BS 11, PS 10, willpower 12, zero armor, 3 BTS, 1 structure point, silhouette 2. Jackpot with bulk and shotgun and para uh, close combat weapon minus 3, 7 points, okay. This figure will be available for Nomads, Bakunin, Jurisdictional Command, Tunguska Jurisdictional Command, Haki Slam, Hasasin Baram, Kapukalki, Starko, Drusbyron Security, and Dash and Company. So many different armies that she can be part of because she is around everywhere. Okay. So yeah, new figure with lots of movement and lots of useful resources here for Infinity. And this figure will be included in both the ITS and AGL tournament packs. So winners can get this figure, okay? And we'll have special cards and special lovely stuff, okay? And now that I have mentioned filler, I can show you that we have a new Mendoza, a new Parvati, and a new filler. Those are three skins for Aristeia players. So three new metal miniatures that you can use in the Hexadome. Taking a look. At the 2021 schedule, we can see here that we had the military order seven for week at the beginning, okay, like Adepticon dates. Now for Gen Con dates, we have Operation Crimson Stone Code 1, okay, and, and, and finally with the beginning of the new Season 13 of ITS and IGL. And finally, the last project of the year, the big one, the big launch of the year, the crowdfunding campaign that is going to happen will be Infinity Deathmatch Tag Ride. But you already know about this. So shall we take a look at a few previews of that upcoming campaign, shall we? Let me show you a few things. Infinity Deathmatch Tag Ride. Last time we were here communicating and showing previews to you about this game. We were talking about Mindscorp, the Pano company. Mindscorp. <laughs> Mindscorp. Which has been featured everywhere during all these years in Infinity. This is mega corporation from Pano that has uh, mining interests in all around the human sphere and is super powerful and cruel even to its own workers, okay? And uh, we showed you the concept design of the Stonebreaker, which is the Pano tag, Pano tag in this in this game, okay? And uh, what we are going to show you right now is the 3D render of how the uh, sculptor executed that design in 3D. So we take a look here at the 3D render of the Stonebreaker, the Pano tag for this game, okay? So we have the red tag, the blue tag, and the and the 
Yeah, thank you, Connie. Orange tag for you, Ching. Thank you, Connie. And now it's time to reveal to you the fourth mining company involved in Infinity Advanced Tax Rise. Okay, shall we take a look at the logo? Ba -ba -bum. There you go. Sterling Forge. Okay, if you are a hardcore Infinity Gamer, you might remember this logo from the terrain that came out in the US Ariadna Army Pack back in 2015. Okay, yeah, you, yeah, you noticed. Thank you so much. Okay, this is Sterling Forge. Okay, the mining company from uh, Ariadna, so now you know that the, the final color here that we were naming for is green, okay, so we have four companies. Yes, Ariadna is stepping into Infinity of Master Ride. Shall we talk about this a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. Sterling Forge was a weapons manufacturer from Caledonia that made his fortune selling weapons to the clans that were fighting each other because Caledonians were fighting each other so much. At some point, one of those clans had a huge debt with the company and they have to give them one Teseum mine to this uh, weapons manufacturer company. So that weapons manufacturing company suddenly find themselves with a Teseum mine, which is the most valuable neomaterial in the human sphere, and they got extreme profit out of it and became uh, an, an notice, uh, a mining company on themselves. Okay, The tag that I'm going to show you right now is the cave crawler, which is the green tag, and yes, this is the Ariadna tag. The clay crawler combines the high, most sophisticated Ariadna technology, which is not sophisticated at all, with the uh, incredible amounts of teseum that they can use in the tag. So the, what they lack of on technology, they balance it with the, because it has teseum, which is incredibly durable and incredibly light, so they can make a tag which is flexible enough to, to fight against other factions tags. Okay, that is the clay crawler. It's, Low tech design, okay, but very sturdy and capable of everything, okay. With this Ariadna tag, we uh, finish the, the presence of the four tags all together. And I know that you're willing to look at the 3D model, okay, and the artwork. Please take a look at it. And this is how it looks in 3D. There you go, okay. So now we know that in a certain way, Pano, Yuching, Nomads, and Ariadna are going to fight each other in this game. And I think we should take a look at how they look the four tags all together in the gaming board, shall we? Let's take a look at this video. There you go, there was a surprise coming. There were many things happening in that video, yes, okay. So now you know that Tag Ride has also a mega beast, okay. Now you know how the game looks like, okay. Industrial look, okay. Four tags fighting each other, and suddenly, yes, a big giant monster comes out of it because those greedy corporations were digging too deep and they annoyed something else, okay. So now you know that they have to fight each other and also fight this giant monster, okay. Let's take a look at the mock up of the contents of the core box, which is essentially this. But if you think that you have seen everything, think again because we have tons of stuff yet to show you. Okay, it's going to be like this think unthinkable because we have many surprises yet to be revealed to you. So, ah, you thought that it was just going to be for tax fighting each other. No, we have plenty of surprises and plenty of contents. Okay, so expect the following weeks and expect the campaign to arrive and suddenly more artwork, more 3D renders, more previews and more exciting things happening on the gaming board of here, this game, Infinity Deathmatch, Tag Ride, which is bigger than it seems, okay? 
if you want to know more about this game, especially mechanics, especially like witnessing a demo game of it, stay tuned because by the end of August we will make another Twitch streaming super video where four people here with beer and pretzels will play live the game and you will see the most essential mechanics of it. Everybody controlling one tag, fighting each other, and at some point, yes, mega beast happening, okay? And that was just the tip of the iceberg, I can tell you that. So stay tuned, okay? So, this has been the summer seminar from Corobus Belli, allowing you to show you new stuff for Aristeia, Rival of Defiance, new stuff for Code 1 and also M4, and finally pitching and pointing at the future, which is Infinity Death Master Ride, which is the next big thing. And when we say big, we really mean big, bigger than ever, bigger miniatures than ever, ever produced by this company before. So, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you're all as excited as I am with this one, okay? Thank you so much for your attention. This has been Carlos, uh, Carlos Belli. Uh, Carlos Belli, Corvus uh, Bostria, whatever. Connie is editing this video, probably fixing all the issues, <laughs> as I was saying. Thank you so much. See you there. Bye.